Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I'm going to show you every single book in my book collection that I have not read yet. I don't have a big TBR pile, which is a to-be-read pile. I only have 41 books out of this entire collection in my room that I have not read yet, but I do love doing this video every year. I think I've done it for the past two or three years where I show you every single book that I have not read because not only does it show you all the books that I'm hoping to read in the future, but it also really invigorates me and makes me excited to read again and I love doing this at the beginning of the year to compare and contrast which books stay on my TBR, which ones I am getting through quickly, and which one has been there for the longest amount of time. I have it somewhat organized by genre and we actually have a pile that's pretty big behind me as well and if there is a book that you think I should get to immediately please comment it down below because I would love to put that higher on my priority list. And one thing that I'm going to try and do in 2023 is really focus on this TBR. I do tend to take a lot of books out of my library through the app Libby and I do read a lot of books through there and that makes me not really focus on the books that I already own. So this year I'm really trying to focus on completing this TBR pile. I read around 70 to 100 books a year. It's getting more around 70 books a year and if I read all of these books that is doable this year. I don't think I will though. Now Let's get into it. So let's start with some romance novels that are on my TBR. Here we have Soulmates by Susan Lee, a YA romance that I'm excited to read because I think it's going to be right up my alley. Then we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is a fandom romance that a lot of people told me I would really enjoy. Then we have Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor, and it says it is a nod to Bridget Jones' Diary and Pride and Prejudice. I have not seen Bridget Jones' Diary, I don't really know what it's about, but I have seen Pride and Prejudice, so that makes me excited. And then we have Six Days in Rome by Francesca Giacco, and I am so excited to read this. I love books set in Italy, and this is about a woman who goes to Italy after being heartbroken, and she finds new love there, and I think this is going to be a favorite read of mine. I have not seen anyone else talk about it, but I'm very excited about it. Now I have a few classics that I want to read. One is If on a Winter Night a Traveler by Italio Calvino and this book is very intimidating to me because I think it's like a story within a story and there's a lot of narratives in this entire book and I don't know if I'm going to understand it but it really intrigues me and I've seen a lot of beautiful quotes about it so I am excited to read it but I'm also very scared about it. Then we have Excellent Women by Barbara Pyme and then I have two Shakespeare plays. One is King Lear. I actually got this because I heard that he wrote King Lear during the plague during his time and I got this at the beginning of COVID because I thought it would be really interesting to read this during the same type of situation that William Shakespeare was going through but I have not gotten around to reading it yet. And then we have Hamlet. I have read Hamlet maybe three times but my favorite edition of Shakespeare plays is from Barnes & Noble. I think they're really accessible to read because you have the text here and then on this page page, you always have the definition of words that you may not know, so I think it's really easy to read. And I wanted to get a new copy of Hamlet because all the other editions that I have I'm not the biggest fan of, so I have read this before, but I do want to reread it and annotate it. And if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know I'm getting into nonfiction, so I have a very big pile of nonfictions that I am so excited to read throughout this year. One of my reading challenges for 2023 is to read one nonfiction a month so I am going to get through all of these this year hopefully maybe not the last one that I'm going to show you because it's a pretty big book but the first one that we have here is The Lonely City Adventures in the Art of Being Alone it says it is a dazzling work of biography memoir and cultural criticism on the subject of loneliness told through the lives of iconic artists by the acclaimed author of the trip to Echo Spring then we have meditations by Marcus Aurelius because I'm really interested in stoicism. Then we have Ask Me About My Uterus, a quest to make doctors believe in women's pain because I do have chronic illnesses and I'm still trying to get diagnoses for that. So I think this one's going to be a really insightful read. Then we have All About Love by Bell Hooks. I've heard nothing but good things about this and cannot wait to dive into it. Then we have What Happened to You, Conversations on Trauma, Resilience, and Healing by Bruce D. Perry and Oprah Winfrey. Then we have Why 
Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Renee Edo Lodge. And the last nonfiction that really intimidates me because it is pretty big is The Letters of J.R.R. Tolkien. My best friend got this for me for Christmas because she knows I really enjoy reading letters from people in the past and I love J.R.R. Tolkien because he wrote The Lord of the Rings, but the font is so small and it's a pretty chunky book. It is much chunkier than The Letters of Vincent Van Gogh and I do want to read this after I read The Lord of the Rings. So this is kind of a treat that I'm going to get to once I finally read The Lord of the Rings trilogy. So I will not get to this until I complete that challenge. That is that entire book stack and now let's get to the one that's right behind me that you can't really see but is almost as tall as me sitting down. This stack is for literary fictions that I'm very excited to get to because that's one of my favorite genres. The first one we have is The Idiot by Alip Batumen. What is happening? I would like to set a record for the court that I had to wait like a solid 10 minutes for the train to go by for me to continue on with this video and I think that was very rude. The next book on my TBR is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Amezi. Then we have Pure Color by Sheila Hetty. This is a very polarizing book. People either love it or hate it, and I'm a little scared about it. Then we have a book that I never said I would read because this author doesn't use quotation marks, but a wonderful bookseller, my dad told her about my channel. She was like, I have to recommend you a book. And I was like, okay, recommend me a book. I'm gonna get whatever you recommend. And she told me, I have to read Normal People by Sally Rooney. And she is the only person on this planet who could convince me to read this book. I'm doing it for her because she was the nicest person in the entire world. Then we have Cult Classic by Sloan Crossley. A friend recently read this and I was watching them update their reading on Goodreads and they shared so many quotes that they loved and so many updates and it made me really excited to read this. Then we have How to Fall Out of Love Madly by Jaina Casale. And those are all the literary fictions that I'm hoping to read in the future. Now let's get into the historical fiction that I want to read. Can you tell that historical fiction is one of my favorite genres? I actually don't know if this book is historical fiction. I don't know if it's magical realism. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. And I haven't really read the synopsis because this is a book that I want to go into a little bit unknowing. So the first one is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I feel like someone said this is inspired by a Shakespearean play. I think, um... Oh my goodness, what is that one? The Tempest? I have no idea. Am I spreading rumors? I have no idea, but I want to read this. Then we have a book that has been on my TBR, I think since high school, that I have not gotten to. I read the first two books in the trilogy. I'm not really that interested in it anymore, but I'm also just curious. And it is The Summer Garden by Paulina Simons. And yeah, I still haven't gotten around to it. It's a very big book and the font is so incredibly small. Maybe I'll DNF it, but I do want to give it a shot because why not? Then we have Our Last Days in Barcelona by Chanel Clayton. Then we have At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Bostorino. And this is a historical fiction set during World War II that I still haven't gotten around to reading. It's pretty short. And I don't know why I added this to my TBR. I thought that a friend recommended this book to me and I texted them telling them that I got it. And they were like, I've never recommended that book to you. So I don't remember who recommended this to me, but it says it's an international bestseller. So we'll see. We'll see if I like it. Then we have We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. This was recommended to me by, I think, Alexandra over at Twirling Pages and Monica Kim over at Monica Kim. And they said that this was a beautiful novel. So I'm very excited to get to this as well. This deals with the Japanese internment in America. There's like so much dust flying around and I feel like, I feel like I'm getting mesmerized by it because that's all I can stare at. I just like see it right in front of me. Another historical fiction that I want to read is The Time In Between by Maria Duenas. And this was given to me by my pen pal and friend Leah. 
and she always recommends the greatest books and I think this is also a show I remember someone commenting telling me this is a show so I do want to read it and then watch the show but boy is this a big book maybe they have an audiobook for it I'll try and see if they have an audiobook for it because I think that will help me get through it because we all know I don't do well with long books <laughs> then we have a thousand ships by Natalie Haynes then we have The Fortunes of Jaded Women by Carolyn Hewn. I am actually going to read this on an audiobook. It's on my audiobook TBR. And the last historical fiction on my TBR, people tell me it destroyed them. It's an amazing book, but it will make you cry. And it is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Haled Hosseini. And I am so scared to read this, but I love books that make me cry, but I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for this. Either way. It is on my TBR. And that is that entire pile behind me. And now we have one more pile to get through my entire TBR. So the last section are fantasy novels that I hope to get to. I don't read fantasy often. It does intimidate me and I don't really have a good relationship with it because I don't find myself truly enamored by it. But I do still want to try a couple of fantasy books out because I do think I should give it a try. So the first trilogy that we have here is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We have The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. The thing that intimidates me about this series is that it's mass market paperback, the font is incredibly tiny, and I do want to annotate it, but there's not a lot of room to annotate a mass market paperback. I do know they have paperback editions of the Lord of the Rings trilogy with these covers because I do enjoy these covers, which a lot of people seem to hate, but I enjoy them. But I'm not going to go out and get another edition of this series when I already own it. So I am going to read the mass market paperbacks and suffer. I'm going to enjoy the book, but I'm going to suffer reading a mass market paperback. They are not my favorite type of book. Then we have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I'm actually not that excited about this book anymore, but I do want to give it a shot to say that I did. And then we have Jade City by Fonda Lee. I've seen so many people tweet about this series and tell me that they fell in love with it immediately. This is like a fantasy mobster story. And you got me with the word mobster because I love Peaky Blinders. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. My favorite show of all time, actually. So I think if I love Peaky Blinders, I should definitely give this a shot because I do want to read a fantasy mobster story. Now we're diving into big book territory and this is when it gets intimidating for me. So the first book that we have here that's probably going to take me a couple of months, maybe even the whole year to read, is the Fire and Blood book by George R. R. Martin. This is the fictional historical textbook about the Targaryen family and their eventual fall from the throne. And I love House of the Dragon. I became obsessed with it and I really wanted to read it to kind of know more about where the show is going to go in the future. But this book is so big. The font is really good. It's a it's a decent font and it's really cool because we have illustrations in here. Let me try and find like a pretty one. Ooh, look at those dragons. I love a book with pictures. We should do that more often. Intimidating but excited for it. Then we have a book that I'm not that intimidated by. It's just a pretty big book and it is Legendborn by Tracy Dion and so many people told me this would be right up my alley. It's a dark academia with some fantasy elements woven into it and it just seems really fun and I want to give it a try because so many people rent and rave about it and I want to be included. I'm a Leo. I always want to be included. Another book that I want to feel included in is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adiyemi and so many people again love this novel and they ranted and raved about it and I did not read it when it first came out but I do want to give it a shot and the next book that I want to read I will probably listen to on audiobook because I think reading it physically would just slow me down so much and I just don't enjoy spending that much time with a novel because I'm just I'm a quick paced person I'm from the east coast we're very fast paced and we just can't we can't ruminate. 
I can't ruminate on things. And that book is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark. This book is so big, the audiobook is way too long, but I want to give it a try. And the last book on my TBR is The Rise of the Dragon, The Targaryen Dynasty, Volume 1. This is taking the story from the Fire and Blood book, but putting it into a beautifully illustrated book, and it is just absolutely beautiful with its drawings. I don't really want to open up the book too much and mess up the spine and it is signed by George R. R. Martin himself. Um, I went to a George R. R. Martin event and it just was the most fun thing ever. I haven't been to an author event since 2019 so it was just so special and so amazing to be in a room with such a prolific author because I never imagined being in the same room as George R. R. Martin and I was so excited when Parker, one of my friends, gave me their copy of The Rise of the Dragon. Thank you so much Parker because this made my entire year. I am so excited to read this. That is my entire physical TBR. I'm really hoping I can focus on reading a lot of these books in 2023. I don't think I'll be able to get through all of them, but it is a nice challenge to be able to focus on all the books that I physically own. Let me know which book I should bump up to the top of my TBR, and let me know which are some of your favorite reads that I have featured here. If you want to follow me anywhere else on social media, all my links will be down below along with my Goodreads and my Instagram because I always post about what I'm currently reading there. And if you've made it this far in the video, leave a book stack emoji so we can see who saves for the longest in all my videos. If you do, thank you so much and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!